Hello, my name is Sean and I'm an elder at Andover Baptist Church and this week I've called my series of devotions Who is in Control? and I'm using the example of how air traffic control guide the flight of an aircraft as a metaphor for how God is in control of our lives and guiding us which is always so much better than us trying to do this ourselves. Throughout this week I've been telling you about my lifelong love of all things to do with the aviation and explaining how when I was a teenager I trained to become an air traffic control officer and yesterday I told you a little bit about the training itself and how I started working in the control tower at Stansted Airport which is in Essex. To begin with I loved the job, it was not piloting but I got to work with aircraft every day. I think all air traffic control officers are frustrated pilots in reality but as time went on the stress of the job began to take its toll. Every day I would travel into work feeling nervous about the day ahead and despite time passing this didn't really go away. You see if you make a serious mistake in most jobs the consequences can be bad but they're not often life threatening. If you make a serious mistake in air traffic control then many lives can be impacted. Some controllers of many years would tell me that they still felt nervous like that daily though of course many did not. Eventually, I took and failed an exam for another air traffic control qualification and I could have waited a few weeks and retaken the exam but at the same time I was told that if I stayed I would soon be posted to Inverness Airport from Stansted as they needed help and I wanted to get married and live in the south, not Inverness. I just felt that this was the right time to leave and with a really heavy heart I resigned. It was a very difficult decision made all the harder because I'd always believed that me getting a place on the course despite all the odds was God's doing and could not understand why now I was so certain I should leave all that behind. Why did it feel like God's will for me to leave after all I'd been through? You'll have to join me again tomorrow to find out why. All week I've been telling you about an imaginary flight from London to Edinburgh and in simple terms what has to take place for that to happen safely and who is in control of it. Yesterday our flight was left cruising at 34,000 feet and was approaching Edinburgh. Some time before reaching the destination, air traffic control will ask the pilot to start descending and the computer in the autopilot would do this for him or her. All the pilot has to do is dial the new flight level onto the autopilot and down it goes at a calculated rate. Once close enough to the airport, the area controller will hand the plane over to approach control this controller is responsible, not surprisingly, for all aircraft approaching the airport to land and it's that controller's role to guide the aircraft onto the end of what is known as the ILS or the Instrument Landing System. This is a really clever duo of radio signals. One to tell the plane's computer that it is lined up on the centre line of the runway and one to tell the aircraft that it is descending at the right angle to touch the runway at exactly the correct spot for a safe landing. An aircraft would capture the ILS signal at around 10 miles out from the airport. In fact, the ILS at some airports is so good and the equipment of some aircraft so accurate that they can land in zero visibility safely. Once the aircraft has been guided onto the end of the ILS, control of it is handed over to the tower controller again, who when it's safe to do so and the runway is completely clear, will give clearance for the aircraft to land. And if the pilot does their job well, the plane touches down gently and quickly slows before turning off the runway and all the passengers you hate flying breathe a sigh of relief. Perhaps if they were aware of just how many people had been involved in that flight controlling things other than the pilots, they would have felt less worried. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 say this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This passage assures us that God knows what he's doing. His thinking is different to ours when it comes to what is best for us, and his ways, and everything he allows, are so much higher and better than ours. Despite what we see around us, we can take a pause and refocus on what really matters. Let the big things become little in the hands of God. Then in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. 
There's beauty in everything God has created. He orders all things and upholds their purpose. We may not understand always why God allows for things to happen in our lives, the things that cause pain and fear and worry. However, we can trust that he has a purpose for it. When I resigned my position as air traffic controller, I was certain that God wanted this for me, but it still felt really strange because I couldn't understand why I was so sure or why I would leave something I had my heart set on for so long. Sometimes we just have to ask God to guide us and then trust that he really is in control and knows what's best, so much better than we do, and then just go for it. We may close our eyes and peep through our fingers as we do this, of course, but the more we do it, the braver we become, especially when we realise eventually that God was in control. Today's song from the Bigger Than My Imagination album by Michael Gungor is called Little Kingdom. It talks about God asking to reign in the little kingdoms we create in our lives. A link to the song can be found in the description below this video, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for listening to me today, and I hope you can join me again tomorrow.